Hi, I'm Alan Picard, and I'd love to give you a few insights from the studio today. You know, in meeting with students, they often ask me, how do I take my color to the next level? Like, I'm not really sure what to do to get better color on my paintings. And I know I want my color to be fresh and to sparkle in my work, and I'm sure you want your color to sparkle in your work. So I want to give you five tips to better color. You ready? Tip number one, create a value study. I know there's no color in that, but it is so important. You've got to create a basic monochromatic value study that will let you get your darks, your middles, your lights, as well as your shapes understood, even the composition of the scene that you're going to interpret. And when you do that, it's a guide for your color. So those values and shapes create a guide for your color. In this case, I've created a value study right here off of this scene. I'm beginning to explore a square composition and I can see my, where my darks, my middles, and my lights are and how they break apart. And that is so important as I go to step number two. Step number two to better color is to create small color studies. Here's a little color study. I'm talking about little people, small and quick. The whole point here is we're gonna try things that we normally would not try. Here's the deal. You get up there to your regular painting and you're intimidated. You need it to be perfect. It needs to be a good painting. And so we don't take risks. We don't try things that are actually gonna open up color breakthroughs in our work. But these small color studies bring breakthroughs because you can experiment. You just lock the inner critic in the cage. You don't let her out. You don't let them out. You leave them in there and you have some fun. Now this color study right here, I will tell you, is 25 marks. That's it. I tried to do it in 20 marks. I needed a five mark bonus. I think it's so fun to try something like that because you're really trying to get to, down to the essentials. And as you can see, I was using a lot of violet and yellow, which is a complementary color to interpret this scene. That really leads us to tip number three when you're doing those color studies. Try a bold, vibrant underpainting, okay? Everybody loves underpaintings. I love underpaintings. As you can see, I used a hot pink underpainting here. I thought, I don't want this painting to get too gray or too dull, too boring. So what happens if I just throw a hot pink, like a fuchsia underpainting? Well, this was a quick indication of what it could look like. And I'll tell you, when you use vibrant, bold underpaintings, you just bring this sparkle to the work. You can always mute it down, even as this is beginning to mute down the color but it's gonna give you life. So hot, red, orange, yellow, pink, violet, something bold, something that maybe you hadn't thought of before. I usually use warm colors more often on those underpaintings than cool colors because you can always neutralize the warmth underneath. Okay, that leads me to number four. The fourth tip is to pick a color approach. I know it sounds simple, but you gotta kinda pick something. Am I gonna do an analogous color scheme? Here's a color wheel. An analogous color scheme would be all right in that yellow orange zone. Maybe do the whole thing in warm colors. Maybe you have your favorite color, say, oh, my favorite color is purple. So I'm gonna do the whole painting analogous in purple. What would it look like? It's certainly gonna have a color approach. Maybe actually very effective. Perhaps you wanna try complements using, you know, violet and yellow or red and green or orange and blue. There are, this color wheel is so effective because you can use it to pick a color approach or to explore. This is a painting that I did off of my little color study. It's a 12 by 12 painting, it took about 90 minutes. And my color approach in this painting is called a triadic palette. That's three colors, like boom, 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 spread out on the color wheel. You're gonna see the red violets. I love the violets, this is all about the violets. The red violets the yellow orange for the warm color, and the blue green, that's the triad. I know that sounds kind of complicated, but you got your cheat sheet and you can try it out, it works great. So that blue green over here, that red violet, and that wonderful warm zone of the light with the yellow oranges. So you gotta pick a color approach. Now, my last tip for you is color accents. Have you ever had that painting that gets muddy? It's just kind of like, ugh. I don't know what to do with this, it's murky, it's a little dull. Well, I'm gonna tell you, 
vibrant color accents can freshen up the whole area. So basically you just have a part of your painting that's dull and if you flick a color, a little accent that's very chromatic, it's, it's got lots of hue in that mark on top of a dull area, it will vibrant and create a much more vibrant uh, communication in that area. So let's check it out. This whole painting is pretty vibrant, but if we were to look in this area, which is kind of a duller area of the scene, I used the red violet and the blue green as color accents. So that little red violet really sparkles it up. Over here, that blue green right on the corner really sparkles up that area. And if you were to use that in your painting, um, it could be orange. It could be, you know, a little flick of red, but very vibrant chromatic color accenting in the area will freshen it up. Okay? So I hope those five tips have been helpful to you. I want to tell you that I'm going to try my hand at a little risk-free painting now. You can see this little six by six color study. It's ready to go. I'm going to have some fun. I've done my tonal study right here. I've, I've checked out this sunset. It's a variation on the scene with a lower horizon line. And I've got my darks, my middles, and my lights. So I understand the scene now. My next job is to create the color study. And when I do this, get some indications of where I'm gonna go and create a painting from it. So check back in. We're gonna do another video when I finish this and you can see how the results come out. I hope this has been helpful to you. I hope you will now go to your easel and do some risk-free paintings and do some crazy color studies. I mean, try something you wouldn't normally try. That's the whole point and how you get a breakthrough in color. And if you want to learn more with me, you can visit picardstudio.com forward slash workshops, my workshops page on my website. It's a great place to find out where you can take a workshop with me and we'll have some fun and we'll try some new things. So, hey, have some fun at the easel now. Be inspired and enjoy some breakthrough color. Take care.